learning never ends at McMaster. Welcome to an opportunity to engage your curiosity from the comfort of your own environment. This online series is sponsored by the McMaster Alumni Association as part of our goal to connect with our global alumni and their curious minds. Hi, I'm Stefan Scarafa with the Department of Philosophy at McMaster University. Uh, I'd like to welcome you to this second installment of uh, For the Curious Mind uh, webinar series brought to you by the McMaster uh, uh, Alumni Association. Uh, as you can see from this first slide, uh, today's talk is about the meaning of life. Uh, and in this talk, you're going to have a number of opportunities to interact. Uh, there'll be polls strewn throughout uh, uh, my brief lecture, and there'll be a Q&A session uh, at the end of the talk. Uh, as you can see, I, uh, I'm here to talk to you about the meaning of life. And this talk is drawn from something that I wrote a few years uh, back about uh, meaning and social roles and the way that you find life's meaning from within your social roles. Uh, uh, also, one thing to note is I've, uh, I, I hope to uh, include a very far from exhausted, uh, exhaustive reading list on the meaning of life, uh, works on the meaning of life, fiction, songs, and a couple of philosophical uh, works addressing this topic. Uh, you should be able to find that on the YouTube posting of, uh, of this uh, lecture. Uh, something else you can see from this intro slide uh, is the subtitle. Uh, is that all there is? Uh, I add that subtitle, uh, well, well, first off, to plug a really cool song by Peggy Lee about the meaning of life, uh, but also uh, to uh, invite you to take a critical stance to what I'm gonna have to say about life's meaning in, in this lecture. Uh, uh, I want you to ask, wait, is that all there is to the question of the meaning of life? All right, so let's start with our first online poll. Let me just ask a question to get us going. What is the meaning of life? Uh, uh, a, caffeine, that's uh, inspired by my wife, who when I asked her this question, she said coffee. Uh, there's pain, uh, uh, that's for those folks who, uh, you know, have a kind of existentialist bent, might agree with Schopenhauer that really what life is all about is, uh, is pain and suffering. Uh, there's 42, uh, and there's also this skeptical response, life has no meaning. Uh, I'll give you about 10, 15 seconds to take the poll, uh, and then we'll proceed. So uh, let's see what our results are. Uh, so many of you, like my wife, uh, say coffee, uh, about 18%. Uh, pain and life has no meaning together make up almost a half. That's excellent. I hope you're wearing your black turtlenecks as you watch this uh, uh, that webinar. Uh, but the one I want to talk about is the one that uh, actually gets the most points uh, in this particular uh, uh, poll, uh, 42. As many of you uh, probably know, uh, 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 42 is Douglas Adams' answer uh, to this question. Uh, and, and the question, as he puts it, is the ultimate question of life, the universe, and everything. Uh, Douglas Adams gives this answer in his uh, book, uh, 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 Hit, uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Um, now, of course, this is a punchline. And you know, why is this a punchline? Well, if you remember from the book, uh, 42 is the answer that this incredible computer uh, generates. I think Deep Thought's its name. Uh, it generates this answer after about seven or so million years of thinking, pondering uh, uh, this question. Uh, but the punchline is that uh, the people who received this answer actually didn't know what the question was. They didn't know the meaning of the question. Uh, so what this suggests is what, when we ask this question about the meaning of life, we need to avoid Adam's punchline. We need to clarify what we mean when we ask what is the meaning of life. So, you know, we should distinguish between a question of what is the meaning of a particular person's life and the question of what is it for a life to have meaning. Uh, uh, it's, the, it's the second question that I want to tackle uh, in this uh, webinar, and at the end, I, hopefully we'll be in a better position to answer the first question, what is the meaning of a particular person's life? To kind of bring this out, again, to help you with this distinction, we might ask, what is the meaning of a particular person's life? Or we might ask, what is it for a life to have meaning? Similarly, we might ask, what are the yellow things? Or we might ask, what is it for something to be yellow? It's those bottom things, it's the orange questions uh, in this uh, 
in the slide that I want us to look at. Uh, I don't really care about yellow. What I care about is what is it for a life to have meaning? I want to know what meaning means, just like we might want to know what yellow means. Uh, uh, the, the point of this is to avoid the punchline, to get a handle on what meaning is about, and then we can ask ourselves whether our life has meaning once we have firmly in mind what meaning is about. Okay, so in the paper that I cited at the very beginning of uh, this set of slides, one of the things that I tackle is what is the meaning of the meaning of life? What, what do we mean when we talk about life's meaning? What are we on about? Uh, so here's a first take. Here's a first stab at it. Uh, for, uh, when we're talking about uh, life's meaning, we're talking about a life that is organized around a number of comprehensive goals. Uh, a life is meaningful if it's organized around a number of co comprehensive goals. Uh, let me give you some uh, illustrative examples. You might have a life that is organized around the comprehensive goal of being a professor. As you'll see, comprehensive goals uh, are often connected to the social roles that are just these ready-made vehicles for us to stand into or to, uh, uh, to enter into uh, in the course of our lives. So you might have a comprehensive goal of being a professor, you might have one of being a father, uh, or you might have one of being a Canadian citizen. You might, most lives are made up of a number of comprehensive goals, uh, and these comprehensive goals are typically embedded in social roles, such as citizen, father, professor, little league coach, you know, uh, uh, all kinds of things. All right. Um, so let me say a little bit more about comprehensive goals. Comprehensive goals are enduring goals that organize a life on a daily basis and over a significant expanse of time. So, for example, being a father is something that you're not, you know, it's not a goal that you achieve, you know, in one day. To be a father, it's just day in and day out for, you know, many years uh, doing various things that are, that make up your relationship with your, uh, with, with your child. Uh, you know, taking the child to school, caring for the child, uh, you know, fixing breakfast, talking to the child, uh, helping the child when things aren't going so well generally giving all kinds of support to the child and building this relationship. A comprehensive goal is it's an enduring goal, uh, such as building this relationship with the child that organizes your daily life. And it's something that you realize not in a day, but over a significant expanse of time. And it's not like it's realized at the end of that expanse of time. It's, ex it's, it's realized over and throughout that expanse of time. Uh, so the first take, the meaning of a meaningful life is to have a life that is organized around a number of comprehensive goals, like father, professor, citizen. Uh, that's, that's one stab at what it is to have a meaningful life. And the idea is that when you ask the question, does this person have a meaningful life? We're basically asking, do they have a life that's organized around a number of comprehensive goals? I'm going to assume that, uh, uh, well, maybe you would have, maybe you wouldn't have. I'll just give you my answer. The answer is uh, no. Uh, uh, I don't think that being a slave over, even though that is a way of having a comprehensive goal, uh, does contribute to the meaning of one's life. I think, uh, I think, and I think that this challenge suggests that my first take here at what it is to have a meaningful life is not quite satisfying. So uh, what I suggest is that we add another element to this idea of what it is to have a meaningful life. Uh, I, the, this further thought is that by re realizing this comprehensive goal, uh, I realize an objectively, I, I realize objectively worthy values. And my thought is that, look, the comprehensive goal of a slave owner that's associated with a slave owner, it does not realize, at least not on balance, an objectively worthy values. You know, in the course of this relationship, you, you might be part of producing certain goods. But the thought is that this is such a pernicious kind of relationship that on net, on balance, what you, this life is not one that's realizing uh, objectively worthy values. This is not a comprehensive goal embedded in this particular pernicious social role that's realizing objectively worthy values. So what, what the idea then is to describe a meaningful life, what we're, uh, what we're describing, what we're referring to are these two elements. And then I'll add one more. Uh, 
to have a meaningful life is to have a life that's organized around a number of comprehensive goals. Uh, by realizing those comprehensive goals, uh, one realizes objectively worthy values. And here's this further idea. One understands the worth of the comprehensive goals that one's realizing in that life. The thought is that that is not something that a slave owner is doing, uh, but it might. It's arguably something that a Canadian citizen, you know, someone who's a professor, someone who's a father uh, might be doing. All right. So now we have this second take at the meaning of the meaning of life. The life organized around a uh, number of comprehensive goals. Those comprehensive goals realize objectively worthy values. And the person that's realizing them understands that those, that, that those comprehensive goals uh, realize worthy uh, values. So are we done? Is this what we're asking we, uh, about when we question the meaning of life? Are we asking whether someone has comprehensive goals of the kind that I've just described on this slide? Yes or no? Ah, no. Oh, you, you folks don't like my answer. <laughs> Uh, well, that's okay, because I don't quite like it either. Uh, uh, hopefully you'll like my, my next answer a bit better. Uh, and if you don't, I'll be prepared to defend it in the Q&A. Uh, but I do hope you push me around in the Q&A with respect to this answer. All right, so I, I do think we need to say something more. We need to add something uh, to uh, get a better uh, account or a more complete account of the meaning of the meaning of life. To introduce this further element, uh, let's consider uh, a challenge to this second take. And I, wanted, I want to illustrate this challenge by reference to a movie that was before that, a book called the, uh, a book by Michael Cunningham called The Hours. Uh, in this movie, uh, there's a particular figure played by Julianne Moore. She plays the role of a mid 20th century American housewife. Uh, she has a comprehensive goal of doing a lot of things as a housewife. She raises this child. Uh, she has a relationship with this child that she loves very much. Uh, she uh, is in a relationship with her husband, and she's doing the various things that we imagine uh, you know, that someone did in this form of relationship in the mid 20th century. Uh, however, there are ways that she isn't a perfect fit for this role. Now, to be sure, the role of a mid 20th century uh, American housewife, that traditional role, wasn't the easiest gig to, uh, you know, to, 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 to perform. There, there are a lot of things that were difficult about the role, but for the character in this movie, uh, there were some particular difficulties. She was particularly emotionally unsuited for the role. First off, she had wide-ranging romantic interests. She, she wasn't, uh, she, she, she was, I think the movie depicts her as having, as being bisexual, uh, maybe homosexual, but nonetheless, she's, you know, living up to the expectations of the time period, which don't allow her to uh, pursue, uh, you know, these emotional uh, impulses and desires. Uh, this, in the bottom corner here of the slide, this is a dramatic moment in the movie where she and her, one of her close friends, you know, kind of, kind of act on the impulses that are sort of animating the relationship that they aren't allowed to act on. And this is a dramatic turning point in the movie. But anyway, her imperfect emotional fit with this role puts her in this really difficult emotional situation. She experiences a great deal of anxiety and stress. Uh, and I think it's largely because she realizes that much of what she does in this role is really valuable and worthy, but she just can't do it. She just can't emotionally, uh, uh, she, she can't, she, she, emotionally she's just not suited for performing these tasks and performing this role day after day. Uh, she's made miserable by it. And in fact, in the movie, she flees, and it's heartbreaking for her, and it's a, it's, uh, it's a tragic uh, aspect of, of the plot of this movie. The point of all this is to illustrate uh, my thought that, look, it's not enough to rationally grasp the worth of, of, of your comprehensive goals. The idea is that you have to have a life that's organized around a number of comprehensive goals, those comprehensive goals have to be ones that realize objectively worthy values. You have to understand rationally the worth of those comprehensive goals. And, but then also, and this is very important, you have to be emotionally suited to rather than emotionally alienated from living a life in pursuit of those comprehensive goals. You need that whole package. Otherwise, you fail to live a meaningful life.
All right, so that brings me to the end of the lecture with one more poll. So my question now is, is that all there is to a meaningful life? To have a meaningful life, does that, are, are, are you doing it? If you satisfy all four of these elements. Uh, so your uh, options here are yes, no, are still thinking about it. And I hope to talk about it more in the Q&A session that's gonna follow in just a few seconds. But let's see what the results of the poll look like first. All right, great. Uh, a whole bunch of you are still thinking about it, which I think is probably the appropriate response. The people who say no, clearly not the appropriate response. Uh, yes, I, I would go with that as well. But anyway, let's talk about this in the Q&A session. All right, so now uh, it's time for questions. If you have a question, uh, just click on the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. And I'll try to get to as many uh, questions as possible in the time we have. Uh, so please proceed. I'll wait here a bit to see uh, what questions you might have. All right, let's just start with this uh, first question. Oh, this is one where I would like to do the professor's trick of turning the question back on you. Uh, uh, you uh, this, the, the first attendee asks, how do you know if your life is not being fulfilled? Um, well, m my thought, m my hope is that I've given an answer that, to what life's meaning consists of uh, that will help you begin to answer a question like that. Uh, the idea is, do you understand the point of your life? Do you understand the, the value of the comprehensive goals that you organize your life around? And are you emotionally suited uh, to, uh, to those particular goals? Uh, and th the thought is that if, you if these goals that organize your life are fundamentally anchored in, in worthy values, and you understand that, and you're emotionally suited for that, that's all there is to having a meaningful life. Uh, let's see. Second question. Will my lecture slides be posted? Yes, they will. Uh, and then finally, uh, and now we have a third question. Uh, why are so many people looking for the meaning of life in the wrong, in the wrong areas, like in jobs that don't fulfill them? Um, this is a very interesting question. Uh, and I think this suggests... I think this suggests something that is productive about asking this question about the meaning of life. I mean, there's a lot of productive things about it. One productive thing is kind of an individualistic thing where, look, you, you look at yourself and you see if you yourself are realizing meaning in your life. But I think one thing that's product productive about framing the meaning of life in this way is you see how, how collective of a project it is for any of us to have a meaningful life. Now, why is that? Because on the story that I'm telling, meaningful lives are lives that are lived embedded in social roles that are not individual creations. They're roles that are uh, created by society as a whole. And it's something that we have to work on to make sure that they're vehicles for the realization of worthy or morally worthy comprehensive goals. So if you're in a society where you have social roles like slave owner or uh, uh, or a traditional housewife who doesn't have as many options as the men, well, that's something that we as a society need to work on. So I think one, one uh, interesting uh, uh, upshot of the way I'm framing the, the idea of a meaningful life is that this is not an individualistic navel-gazing exercise. It actually invites us to try to do something to make our society a place that's a, a home for all of us where we can live meaningful lives within uh, that world. Uh, let's see. So I've got a, uh, a bunch of, a number of other questions are. So here's this question. Oh yeah, here, here's a good one. Where does happiness come into this? That is a good question. And there, there are many reasons why it's a good question, but one is that happiness is really a, that isn't, though I think we, we, we throw that word around like we know what it means. It's kind of like, the meaning of life, in that it's a term or an idea that we really have to get clear on uh, what it means. Uh, you know, we might think of happiness as just like some just brute pleasure or something like that, but you could have a more uh, robust conception of happiness. And to my mind, the sort of happiness that I'm interested in or that, that I think is something that's worth caring about is the happiness that gets embedded <laughs> in these comprehensive goals where you're emotionally suited for the 
for the comprehensive goal and you understand the value and worth of it. The idea is that, so my thought is that this might be a way of making sense of the idea of happiness such that happiness is something we should care about. Uh, to have a meaningful life in the way I've described it, I think we could at least argue that that's what we're after, really, when we're, when, when we're after happiness. Uh, but that would be a nice question to have with you. Uh, I'd, I'd love to be able to talk to you about this and have an exchange. But uh, I think I'll just leave it at that right now. Let's see. So here's, here's a question. Is there a spiritual element of the meaning of life? Well, I don't want to, uh, I'm going to keep playing this card, but we, I think we need to really get clear, clear about what we mean by a spiritual element uh, to the meaning of life, or the, the spiritual element part. I, I think uh, here, too, we might be able to say something like that we're capturing something spiritual insofar as we have a conception of the meaning of life where we're embedded in social roles that realize values that are just bigger than just ourselves. The thought would be that, look, when I realize this role as a professor or as a mother or as a citizen, what I'm realizing is a good that goes beyond my good, and I'm answering to something larger than, than just myself. I'm, large, I'm answering to uh, uh, goods uh, in the social world that we share uh, with others besides us. Uh, so there might, I think there is a sense of the spiritual in this. Um, but I suspect you have something else in mind. And here too, it'd be nice to ha have an exchange to see exactly what that is. But at the very least, I can tell you how I might initially respond to your question. Okay. So I see that we have 35 questions in the queue. We won't be able to answer them all, but I should be able to answer a few more, uh, um, maybe two or three. Um, so let me answer this question. You are giving meaning from an individual perspective. So I think you preempted, uh, or, or, or I preempted this question a bit in what I just said a bit ago. I'm actually trying to give an account of meaning that locks us into a larger collective, where we're members of a greater whole realizing comprehensive goals that are comprehensive goals uh, that are embedded in greater goods, like the good of relationship with your child and the well-being of your child, or in the case of other roles, say like Canadian citizen, uh, a, a relationship with the, the collective that is the you know, that is Canada and the goods of that collective. So I'm, I very much hope to avoid uh, this sort of stereotype or hackneyed view where meaning of life is, you know, just self-absorbed individualistic navel gazing. I, I'm hoping to have given an account that's going to turn us outward a bit. Ah, now here's a question. What does objectively worthy mean? Who determines? Uh, that's a reason uh, to take more philosophy classes, because that's something that we talk about all the time. And this is, this is a tough nut to crack. What I've said uh, uh, so, uh, uh, rests on this idea that there is a notion of objective worth of a value. Uh, I do have more to say about that, and a lot of philosophers have more to say about what that might mean, uh, and then who determines it. Uh, in short, my answer is going to be something like, well, we determine it, and we determine it based on our various uh, starting point ethical commitments and value commitments. Uh, there's a kind of objectivity there, though, because our starting point is something that needs to be made sense of as a coherent whole, uh, a coherent whole that, also, that, both, that makes both rational sense and also responds in the right way to our emotional needs. This sort of mirrors my account of the meaning of life, uh, but the idea is that uh, we, we, we are born and live in a society where we have various commitments instilled in us as part of our socialization, and the objectively worthy ethical commitments or value commitments are those that are left standing once you rationally reflect on the totality of them and try to uh, collect them in a coherent whole. 
And collecting them in a coherent whole means that there has to be a kind of rational coherence, as well as a kind of emotional coherence, where it's not just some spare, abstract, austere, rational idea that survives. It's, a, it's an idea that meshes well with our emotional needs and our and, and, and inclinations, desires, and that kind of thing. So I believe I have time for one more question. Uh, oh, here's a question. How do you know whether you are emotionally suited? You may think you are, but what if you are not? That is, I think that's a very insightful question. This issue of being emotionally suited is not necessarily something that you're going to understand right away. And people can delude themselves for a very long time about whether they're emotionally suited or not. I, I think the woman in the hours basically did that. She went on as if she was emotionally suited for a very long time, but she was not. Uh, I wish I had an easy answer for you other than to say that it's hard work <laughs> to, to uh, work that out. And you probably, uh, it'll probably take you a while to get the right answer to it. Well, thank you very much uh, for uh, participating in this second edition of uh, the For the Curious Mind series. I, I very much hope you enjoyed the talk. Uh, this presentation was recorded and will be archived on the Master YouTube channel within a few days. Uh, note that I'm, I'm hoping that they'll also append my reading list for those who are curious uh, to read on about uh, issues in the meaning of life. Uh, also, uh, the, it'll be posted there. You can check out that reading list, I hope, and you certainly can rewatch or share this with friends. Uh, for a complete list of alumni online and in-person event listings, uh, visit alumni.mcmaster.ca and see event listings under the Meet People drop-down menu. Thank you uh, very much again for joining us, and have a great day. Learning never ends at McMaster. Welcome to an opportunity to engage your curiosity from the comfort of your own environment. This online series is sponsored by the McMaster Alumni Association as part of our goal to connect with our global alumni and their curious minds. Ooh.